Miami Dolphins is entering an era of victory. Why do I say that? Take a look at these reasons. Finance is the most successful issue of the Miami Dolphins under GM Chris Greer. Miami Dolphins is highly competitive for a place in the playoffs in the 2021 season. The Dolphins uniforms from 2008 are being recreated. Kyle Pitts has clearly become what Dolphins fans want. Subscribe please. Finance is the most successful issue of the Miami Dolphins under GM Chris Greer and Brian Flores time. The Miami Dolphins are just about done flushing the system. Entering year three of the Brian Flores and Chris Greer regime in South Florida, the team appears to be finished with the painstaking task of ridding the roster of the sins of the past. The team is completely remade and the financial weight of past decisions no longer lingers over this team like a black cloud on the horizon. Miami's rebuilding effort may or may not net the team an elusive championship in the coming years, that will be the ultimate judge of whether or not it worked. But at the very least we can say with confidence that the rebuild is working in more ways than one. The Dolphins' salary cap outlook is a terrific example of this, and we're not talking about the spending power or room to sign players. Rather, we're looking at the Dolphins' dead cap, salary cap space that has been reserved for terminated contracts and players no longer on the team. NFL contracts can tricky business, but the long and the short of it is that teams can pay players guaranteed money up front in the form of signing bonuses, that money can then be split up over several years of salary cap so long as that player remains on the roster. But if a team trades or cuts a player that they've paid more money to than they've had accounted against their past salary caps, the remaining balance gets advanced into the current season's cap as dead money. Warren Sharp of Sharp Football offered an eye-opening assessment of the Dolphins' trajectory with the dead cap since the start of the Flores Greer regime in 2019. Miami Dolphins dead cap, 2019, $67 million. Number one most, 2020, $39 million. Number four most, 2021, $7 million. This team is on the other side of the growing pains, roster retooling process. 2019 was all about one thing for the Dolphins, clearing out bad contracts that were signed by the previous regime to older players who would not be a part of the team's long-term part of the team's long-term forecast. It resulted in the highest figure in the league. 2020 was more of the same, only to a lesser degree. Miami, in 2020, still owed dead cap for the past contracts due to safety Rashad Jones, $10.1 million, safety Minka Fitzpatrick, $5 million, linebacker Kiko Alonso, $2.2 million, and many others, all signings or selections from a past regime under Adam Gase, Mike Tannenbaum and, to a degree that is debated, Greer. Over the last two seasons, the Dolphins accounted for over $100 million in cap space that went to players no longer on the team. So when you hear the Dolphins talk about attacking building a team with a sustainable winner in mind, this is why they operate the way they do. Paying big money up front and then deferring the balance to years down the road and having to foot the bill only part way through the original financed window can create crippling backlogs of salary cap space that you can't spend. These Dolphins don't do that. And now, entering year three of a new era, the team is finally free of the restrictions that bad habits of the pack. Miami Dolphins is highly competitive for a place in the playoffs in the 2021 season. The Miami Dolphins got the cruelest taste of just how competitive the AFC Conference is in 2020. The team became the first AFC team in the wildcard era to finish with 10 wins and be the conference's number 8 seed, a recipe that saw the Dolphins miss the playoffs despite an expanded playoff field for the first time last season. And the competition only figures to be heating up. The Dolphins have gotten better, that much is certain. Greg Rosenthal of NFL.com stacked the teams of the AFC into tiers ahead of the 2021 NFL Draft and his placement for the Dolphins as a playoff contender, alongside another seven teams in the AFC. Brian Flores has proven he's as good at coaching a squad that is greater than the sum of its parts as he is at changing coordinators. He said, the NFL Draft could very well serve as a tipping point in the crowded field in the AFC. You could make a firm case for, case for two of the other seven teams in that tier, Tennessee and Pittsburgh, having fallen off considerably given their free agent losses this offseason. But Miami must balance drafting for now versus drafting for the future. If they strike gold, it may be the push they need to punch the ticket they couldn't last year, a trip to the playoffs. 
The Dolphins' uniforms from 2008 are being recreated. There's been plenty of calls for the Miami Dolphins to make some decisions regarding their uniforms as of late. Specifically, it feels like most fans are hoping to see the team return to their roots and embrace the throwback look full-time. The Dolphins have two separate versions of their throwback uniforms, enough to tease fans into hoping that it will be a permanent change. But the modern logo doesn't appear to be going anywhere anytime soon. After all, it was a big move for team owner Steven Ross when the team decided to rebrand their look into a sleek, modernized version of a classic look. So Miami budging back to the throwbacks full-time feels like a bit of a long shot. But what about a remodel of the new look? All sports culture is currently putting a new design on all 32 teams in their respective uniforms, and here's what they cooked up for the AFC East. What do you think, Dolphins fans? Are you in for a hybrid look of modern logo and the throwback kits all in one? Kyle Pitts has clearly become what Dolphins fans want. It seems there's a clear choice for Miami Dolphins fans when it comes to the sixth overall selection, and that choice is Kyle Pitts. The Florida tight end is largely considered among the options for the Dolphins after their trades from 3 to 12 and back up to 6 a few weeks ago along with LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase, Oregon tackle Penny Swell, and a pair of Alabama wide receivers, Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddell. It's not even close when it comes what Dolphins fans want, at least based on a couple of Twitter polls. While those obviously aren't necessarily scientific and have a rather large margin of error, the overwhelming support for Pitts was truly eye-opening. As we've discussed earlier, Pitts is a unique prospect in that he's more than just a tight end and he would provide a new dimension to the Dolphins' offense. He's also been described as a generational type of talent, evidenced by the fact the possibility he could be selected fourth overall has been discussed and that was discussed and that would make him the highest drafted tight end ever. He also would become the first tight end taken in the first round by the Dolphins. And Pitts clearly has become the people's choice for the Dolphins fans.